One of these things is not like the others. One of these things doesn't belong. Can you tell which thing is not like the other by the time I finish this song? The Marx Brothers, the most chaotic and anarchic comedians of the 1920s and 30s. Groucho was a whirlwind of wisecracking. Tomorrow we start tearing down the college. But Professor, Professor where, where will, will the students, students sleep? sleep? Where they always sleep, in the classroom. Chico was a mischievous Italian and a skilled piano player. You see, we keep the roof in the basement so when the rain comes, the chimney don't get wet. Harpo never said a word, but still made the most noise. And Zeppo, an awkward young man who barely did anything, and when he did, it was rarely funny, which in itself is almost a joke. You know, there's some mighty pretty country around here. I've... Uh... I beg your pardon. Mrs. Thompson wants to know if you'd reserve a table for dinner for her in a nice quiet spot. A nice quiet spot? Yeah. How is she can eat in the lobby? Some may think of him as the epitome of a straight man, as in the five films he supposedly co-starred in, his entire purpose was to feed Groucho and in return be verbally slaughtered by Groucho. Let me congratulate you. I'm proud to be your son. My boy, you took the words right out of my mouth. I'm ashamed to be your father. Well, I'm sorry. You're sorry. You're a contemptible car. I repeat, sir, you're a contemptible car. Oh, if I were a man, you'd resent that. But the flaw that makes Zeppo seem at times so unnecessary is that, unlike Abbott and Wise, who were very much joined at the hip with Costello and Morecambe, not only did Groucho have lengthier and more laughable interactions with his straight woman, Margaret Dumont, Zeppo was usually not given the chance to win over the audience. I'll be back someday. All right. Keep a light burning in the window. Yes, sir. If you can find a window. All right, sir. Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye. In the years since the brothers left their distinct marks on the field of entertainment, Zeppo has been used on at least a few occasions to emphasize when a character or actor is a member of a team despite contributing zero to their success. Well, I don't know, I sometimes feel like the Marx Brothers, we lost Zeppo. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Hello. Who are you? I'm Zeppo. When I worked there, I was so funny, my nickname was Zeppo. Let's just get this stuff set up, Frank. <laughs> Zeppo was born Herbert Manfred Marx in 1901. He was the youngest of five brothers, Leonard, Adolf, Julius and Milton. In 1905, brother Julius decided to follow in the footsteps of his uncle Al Sheen and become an entertainer. Hopping from vaudeville act to vaudeville act, he performed around the United States, and eventually Lenny, Adolf and Milton were also pushed in front of an audience by their mother Minnie. The four Marx Brothers developed from a singing show to a comedy act, and became a moderate success until, after over 15 years of performing day and night in theatres of various sizes and smells, their rags-to-riches dreams were reached, as the brothers became a hit on Broadway. I've waked myself up from nothing to a state of extreme poverty. In between this rise to fame, World War I had plucked Milton out of the act, as he was the only brother fit enough to serve in the army. And so a 17-year-old Herbert was booted in as a replacement. Although Milton did survive the war, aided by the fact it was over shortly after he was drafted, he never rejoined the act, as he'd never enjoyed doing it. My name is Sammy Brown, and I just came into town. Saw your ad, you Mr. Lee, so you can make a mint on me. What do you do? Dance, sing. Play a role? Anything. Say, I'm a fine for guys like you, because there's nothing I can't do. Off stage, Herbert was apparently quite a juvenile delinquent. Thus, enlisting him into showbiz was his mother's way of keeping him out of trouble, and doing so probably saved her youngest spawn from jail and or an early grave. Oh, but you don't... I don't want to talk to you about this again, you snob. I'd horsewhip you if I had a horse. The Marx Brothers were given their unique eye-catching names by a fellow comedian they met, Art Fisher, sometime in the 19-teens. 
While the names Groucho, Harpo, and Chico are very self-explanatory, though still debated, besides Harpo, the reason behind Zeppo has been given many origin variations. Zeppelins were a big thing in those days, and that's when Herbie became Zeppo. He always was full of hot air. <laughs> Harpo says in his autobiography that there was a vaudeville act involving a chimpanzee called Mr. Zippo, and Herbert liked acrobatics. After a decade of performing sketches such as Fun in High School, where Groucho was Dutch and Harpo was Irish, 1924's Al Satias was the brothers' first Broadway show, which, despite being a great success, sadly was not adapted for film, unlike their next two musical comedies, nor has a copy of the script survived. Luckily, the performance of the opening scene was performed and filmed for 1931's The House That Shadows Built. I want to play a dramatic part, the kind that touches a woman's heart, to make her cry, for me to die. Did you ever get hit with a coconut pie? My name is What Do You Care? My home is anywhere. People say I'm awful dumb, so I thought to you I'd come. The plot of the play, which was recreated in 2014 thanks to a mega amount of research by Mark's mega fan Noah Diamond, involved the brothers each taking turns to woo a wealthy young woman seeking thrills. Swanee, how I love you, how I love you, my dear Swanee. Give me a break. A break? Here's a break. I always carry one for this I... imitation. Say, I ought to lay this on your head. You can't do that. You don't belong to the Bricklayers Union. Groucho got to play a fairy and Napoleon. From the moment that I first laid eyes on you, there's been something I'm ashamed of. And I think it's you. <laughs> In addition to a pianist, Chico was a hypnotist. You are a snake. Look, I don't know how to be a snake. <laughs> It's like a worm, but more, you know? Harpo got the most praise by critics for being such a majestic maniac. <laughs> Meanwhile, Zeppo tried to buy the woman's affection with clothes and jewels. I'll go, but first there's one request I wish to make. What is it? Will you please let go of my hand? In 1929, the Marx Brothers made their first movie, or rather their first talkie, which was an adaptation of their second big theatre hit, The Coconuts, which they'd performed on Broadway from 1925 to 1928. Set in a Florida hotel, Zeppo plays Jamison, the assistant to the manager, Mr. Hammer. Ironically, due to the way the cast of characters was laid out in the intro credits, Zeppo seems to get top billing. Tis ironic, as the coconuts is peak pointless Zeppo. Yeah. Jamison, I'm going down, I'll meet the 415. Yeah. If I never come back, you'll know I'm still waiting for the train. Yes, sir. And uh, in my absence, I'm relying on you to take good care of everything. Well, you can depend upon me, sir. That's fine. Zeppo has a habit of disappearing whenever something funny happens, thereby making sure all the funny dialogue and business go to his brothers. During this 90-minute movie, he has four moments of purpose. He brings Groucho a telegram. A couple of telegrams for you, Mr. Hammer. Oh, sorry, two telegrams. He tries to make a suggestion to improve the hotel's business, but gets shot down by wit. Mr. Hammer, I think I know what's wrong with the hotel. I think I know too. You're fired. Get your hat and my coat and get out. Well, don't worry, Mr. Hammer. In a few weeks, you'll be cleaning up. Yes, and making the bed. He silently takes note of who buys what and for how much during an outdoor auction. Sold for $600. Wrap up that lot and put some poison ivy on it. And lastly, he is the first brother to arrive at an oddly Spanish-themed wedding party. How do you do? How do you do? Did Mr. Hammer come in? Mr. Hammer? Yes, he'll be here directly. But is immediately ignored thanks to the arrival of Mr. Hammer's hat. In their second film, an adaptation of their third and final theatre production, Zeppo made up for his very trivial start by appearing in one of the Marx's most cleverly written scenes. Semicolon. How do you spell semicolon? All right, make it a comma. Many connoisseurs of the Marx Brothers rank Animal Crackers as their finest work, which may or may not have to do with the fact Zeppo only appears in three of this 90-minute movie's scenes. Hunga Dunga, Hunga Dunga, Hunga Dunga, and McCormick. You've left out a Hunga Dunga. 
You left out the main one, too. He once again plays a character called Jamison, the secretary to Groucho's Captain Spaulding. You said a lot of things here that I didn't think were important, so I just omitted them. Where? Oui. Oh, Jamison wasn't the only time the Marx's writers didn't feel it necessary to attach a new name to the same persona. Chico got Ravelli twice, and Harpo was both Pinky and Rusty twice. In one thing, he is very strict. Once is women young and fit, and as for men, he won't have any cramps there. After introducing the captain via song, Jamison vanishes for a whole hour and returns in the final 30 minutes to write the letter Spaulding is dictating. Hoping this finds you, I beg to remain... Hoping this finds him where? Well, let him worry about that. Don't be so inquisitive, Jamison. Sneak. He then hurries back in the film's final minute, only to get knocked out by Harpo. Hey, what's the idea? Jamison, take a letter to my lawyer. If he hears anything obscene, he'll naturally repel him. I hate a dirty joke, I do. Unless it's told by someone who knows how to tell it. Although still not as prominent as his older brothers, Zeppo's screen time and importance to the plot was definitely boosted up during the next three films. Now free from the confines of scripts written specifically to play in one location, Paramount Pictures were able to let the Marxes run wild into less confined settings, and so their third movie, Monkey Business, takes place on a ship. Columbus was sailing along on his vessel. On his what? Not on his what, on his vessel. Don't you know what vessel is? Sure, I can vessel. The brothers are all stowaways, and once discovered, spend 50 of the film's 80 minutes both hiding from and pestering the ship's crew and passengers. The passengers include a retired wealthy gangster, Joe Helton, and his daughter Mary, and a rival gangster, Alkie Briggs, and his wife Lucille. While dodging the crew, Zeppo encounters Mary and Briggs. He flirts with the gangster's daughter, and along with Groucho, is given a gun and told to rub out Joe Helton, which they both don't do, but thanks to Alki being distracted by his feisty Thelma Todd, there are no repercussions for disobeying the tough guy. Does it matter to you whether you ever see me again? I can't think of anything in the world that matters more. Mary, I'll never leave you. Once the ship docks, the solution to the brothers' problem of getting back onto dry land without passports is solved by Zeppo. You know who's on this boat? No. Maurice Chevalier, the movie actor. I just ran into him. Hey, he looks like Chevalier. Yes, he's a strong And I can look like Chevalier. Well, I certainly look like Chevalier. But that's not enough. You've got to sing one of Chevalier's songs to get off this boat. If a nightingale could sing like you, they sing much better than you do. Sandy, you sing like that and then throw us all off the boat. Of course, even if this preposterous plan worked, it would still mean only one of the quartet would be allowed to leave. And considering the real Chevalier is not seen on board, I do wonder if Zeppo did to the singer what Harpo did to the aviators in A Night at the Opera. If a nightingale could sing like you, they sing much better than they do. Uh, never mind that. Get back in the line where you belong. The next portion of the film involves the Marxes having fun at a party Joe Helton is hosting at his mansion which is interrupted when Mary is kidnapped by Alki Briggs's men. The finale of the film involves Zeppo having a big brawl with Briggs. Where's all those farmer's daughters I've been hearing about for years? In Horse Feathers, the youngest brother is definitely the one who keeps the story rolling, and his importance is highlighted on the film's DVD cover as not only is it the only one to feature Zeppo actually on the cover, but it is the only DVD in this box set not to feature Groucho on its spine. Zeppo plays Frank Wagstaff, son of Professor Wagstaff, who has just taken over Huxley College, where his son is a student. The professor is grouchy because Frank is dating Connie Bailey, the college widow. 
For the benefit of viewers who, like me, are uncertain what a college widow is, it is not the widow of a college professor. It is a stigma similar to the town bicycle. Only the woman, in this case Thelma Todd, has a reputation for lusting after randy students. Frank tells his father that he should be more concerned with Huxley College's lack of morale, which he attributes to their football team's losing streak, and he advises him to hire two professional football players who live in the town. While Professor Wagstaff is accidentally recruiting Baravelli and Pinky, and enrolls them into the college so that they can revive their old fun in high school sketch... Of course, you are all familiar with the symptoms of cirrhosis. Sure. So roses are red, so violets are blue, so sugar is sweet, so so are you. Why don't you bore a hole in yourself and let the sap run out? Zeppo croons out a love song that each of the brothers take a shot at. Everyone says I love you. The cop on the corner and the burglar too. The preacher in the pulpit and the man in the pew says I love you. His brothers then each take a shot at Connie Bailey, in a scene that is unfortunately very choppy. Oh, the shame of it. That I should live to see a son of mine try to take a dame away from his father. Dad, I can... Enough of this. You leave here immediately, and I'll stay here and settle with this woman. Be a lamp in the window for my wandering boy. Frank points out that his father picked the wrong players in a scene that, at some point in production, featured Zeppo having an ultrasound scan. The last ten minutes of this 60-minute movie features the American football match between Huxley and Darwin. The highlight of Zeppo's involvement with the match is when Harpo deliberately prevents him from scoring. Nice work, Pinky! Duck Soup is ranked as one of the greatest comedies ever created. Playing Rufus T. Firefly's assistant, Bob Rowland, Zeppo is back to being the fourth wheel on a tricycle. However, he is still much more active than he was in their first two films. Where's my secretary? Here I am. Good heavens, you're Uh, take a letter. Like in Animal Crackers, he is the first brother to appear and introduces Groucho via tune. His Excellency is due to take his station, beginning his new administration. When we next see him, he is silently writing down Groucho's orders, like in The Coconuts. Why well, said something to Vera Mopkell in his presence once and he slapped my face? Why didn't Vera slap your face? She did. What did you say to her? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Where'd you hear that story? Well, you told it to me. Oh, yes, I remember. In a film filled with political satire, Bob Rowland is actually the root that sparks the war between Fredonia and Sildavia, as he suggests Firefly provoke the ambassador of their rival nation to hit him, but this backfires. Thrice. <laughs> He appears continuously alongside his brothers during the final 20 minutes of this 70 minute film, featuring a musical declaration of war and the battle of Margaret Dumont's cottage. Zeppo is left out of arguably the most famous Marx Brothers moment, where Chico and Harpo, dressed identically to Groucho, try to convince the president he is looking at his reflection in a mirror. Your Excellency, you're shooting your own men! What? You're shooting your own men. Here's five dollars. Keep it under your hat. Never mind, I'll keep it under my hat. Duck Soup was neither a critical nor a commercial success upon its release, and as their contract with Paramount was set to expire, the Marx Brothers decided not to return to the studio. But more importantly, at least for the purposes of this video, Zeppo decided he'd had enough. As much as Marx fans may ridicule him today, the youngest brother's overall lacklustre involvement with the team did not go unnoticed by critics, even back when they were performing in front of a live audience. The first draft of Duck Soup's script, originally titled Cracked Ice, had given Bob Rowland more to do and say, so we can only speculate whether his role was cut because he decided to leave, or if his part being shrunk down was what made him quit. While his brothers moved to MGM, where they made five more movies, Zeppo became an agent, 
a profession he shared with his fellow ex-entertainer brother, Gummo. Uh, you want that uh, in the letter? No, put that in an envelope. The Paramount films had allowed the Marx Brothers to run wild with non-stop spontaneous zaniness. MGM watered down the chaos. At the heart of these films is a love story that the brothers do their best to aid, which, to be fair, they also did in The Coconuts and Animal Crackers, but in those films they definitely weren't as concerned with the plight of these young lovers. Therefore, many speculate that had Zeppo stayed in the act, he would have played all the delightfully dull but handsome male leads. Possible, but not probable. He'd have more likely been used as Groucho's lackey, or the in-betweener for his brothers and the real world, a task that MGM gave to Chico. You don't have to pay me, but you can't fire me. Zeppo's contribution to the Marx Brothers off-camera was making a deal with RKO Studios for his brothers to star in a movie version of the play Room Service. A bad deal, as it turned out, or at best, a very odd deal. Rather than retailer the script to suit the Marx's style, or have Groucho, Chico and Harpo for the first time act as characters who weren't mute Italian or wearing fake hair, the brothers play themselves in a film that is an uncomfortable blend of subtle humour and Harpo humour. Yes, sir, it's a wonderful. I still think it's a terrible play, but it makes a wonderful rehearsal. Of course, I like them a little bigger. While Groucho's second claim to fame was his radio and television show You Bet Your Life, Zeppo Marx engineered a few inventions, including a heart monitoring wristwatch and an electric body warmer. What I find a tad baffling is that despite seemingly wanting to disassociate himself with a character that had no personality, Herbert continued to call himself Zeppo just as publicly as he did privately for the rest of his life. According to Harpo's wife, Zeppo was the man who made Groucho laugh the loudest. Interviewer Dick Cavett did try to get Zeppo to appear on his show, as an increasingly frail Groucho did several times, but the television network told him they couldn't afford his fee. My boy, get in there and play like you did in the last game. I've got five dollars bet on the other team. Zeppo Marx died in November 1979, age 78. The youngest brother was the last to live by only two years, as the third oldest, Groucho, died aged 86 in 77. General Smith reports a gas attack. He wants to know what to do. Come to take a teaspoonful of bicarbonate soda and a half a glass of water. Yes, sir. If the tale is true, Zeppo's finest moment as a member of the Marx Brothers was not captured on film. One week in 1929, Groucho couldn't go on stage due to appendicitis, and so, as Zeppo's part was the easiest to remove, the youngest brother took over the grease paint. The result was, not only did Zeppo, to everyone's surprise, do the job well, but some said he was a better Groucho than Groucho. I married your mother because I wanted children. Imagine my disappointment when you arrived. And I've kept yelling since I first commenced it. I'm against it. 